what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? On yesterday, since it was the 4th of July, I was reading a series of articles trying to gain some perspective on what Americans thought about their founding fathers, their so-called founding fathers. I came across this article on Facebook about this guy named Shannon Lanier, who is the sixth great-grandson of so-called founding father, Thomas Jefferson, and an enslaved woman named Sally Hemings. He wore the same outfit as his infamous ancestor for the Smithsonian Magazine piece, American Descendants. But Lanier, who is black, said in an article in the magazine's July issue that he chose not to wear a wig. Check out the reason, fam. I didn't want to become Jefferson. My ancestor had his dreams, and now it's up to all of us living in America today to make sure no one is excluded from the promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Dude is a TV host in Houston, and he co-authored a book about his family, Jefferson's Children, The Story of One American Family. Also, he said of the third president, he was a brilliant man who preached equality, but he didn't practice it. He owned people, and now, I'm here because of it. I don't think, I don't think he was emphatic enough about the resistance. Thomas Jefferson was a monster. If he was so brilliant, he would have never enslaved human beings. That's brilliant. At least you, you get into the area. I mean, I think that's one qualification. That alone don't make you brilliant, but I think that's one of the qualifications that you do not enslave human beings. It's nothing brilliant about that. It's nothing brilliant about raping a woman who you forced into slave labor and procreating with her five children who you also enslave. And left penniless. Thomas Jefferson, make no mistake about it, he was a monster. And I saw, I happened, I'm gonna tell you the post it was. It was MSN. Oh, they got a bunch of racists on MSN, just like Yahoo, a bunch of them. And it was interesting how when the worst of their kind is put on blast, they always try to find a redeeming quality about them. There is no, and I mean absolutely no, redeeming quality about a person who enslaves another. They were talking about, well, you know, that was the past. You know, you can't judge standards or you can't judge morals from 1700 by today's standards in 2020. Morals don't change. People may change, but morals don't change. The roads, the bridges, the landscape may change, technology may change, homes, the building process may change, clothes change, morals do not change. So it's gotta be something wrong with you first and foremost to own a human being and it's something wrong with you to try to justify and find any, a redeeming quality about someone who did. This is why it's so hard for them to tear those monuments down because they see good in those people. But I can guarantee you if the roles were reversed and 
black people had enslaved white people, they wouldn't find not one redeeming quality about one slave, black slave owner. I can guarantee you that. And they know it. Every last one of you out there who trying to ride for Jefferson and the rest of them, always trying to find an excuse. You know damn well if black people had enslaved white folks, there wouldn't be one black person who was a slave owner that you would find a redeeming quality about. So I find nothing redeeming about Thomas Jefferson and none of the rest, Washington, none of them. They were all monsters. These people raped men, women, girls, boys. When they did have children, they bounced on them. They dipped. They sold their own children, man. Do you understand what I'm saying? They sold their own children. This is what white folks have to come to grips with. Some of y'all got ancestors who owned slaves. They owned slaves. That means they sold slaves. And all of them had sex with enslaved. And I'm trying to get away from calling human beings slaves because they're not slaves. They were enslaved, but they're not slaves. They're human beings who were enslaved. Man. They're like, well, you know, you can't judge him. You know, he was, you know, you know, it was what people did back in the day and it's a new day. So basically you're telling me since everybody was owning slaves, it was cool to own slaves. Since the majority owned slaves, it was cool. Since the masses owned slaves, it was cool. You know, you take the M off of masses, you got what? Asses. And this is how the masses often operate, like a cult, a gang. Got that mob mentality, which is cool for everybody. Long as we all eating, it's all good. So to try to justify slavery because everybody else was doing it, you're going to say, well, we enslaved, the reason why they had slaves was because so they could build the economy. They owned slaves because they didn't have any money. Well, you could say the same thing about a person that goes out and rob a bank. Well, man, I robbed a bank, you know, because I had no money. You know, so you got to forgive me because, you know, it's not about morals. You know, it's just what you do if you ain't got no money. You rob a bank. You take something. Bust somebody in the head. Take it. Always trying to justify that bullshit. Slavery was bullshit and y'all know it. It was the greatest atrocity to ever happen in this country. These people, the, the acts that they committed, I don't even have to go down, down the line, man. It's so damn despicable. It's so inhuman. It was so uncivilized. And to this day, people try to justify. They want to try to justify because they know that the people who did the enslaving, blood is running through their veins. Let me tell you something. I got family members whose blood is running through my vein and they wouldn't shit. And I don't care nothing for them. I have nothing nice to say about them. I disown them. See, that's what you do when you're a stand-up person. When you're strong on your convictions, when you stand for something, it doesn't matter the relationship of the person who is the perpetrator who is the criminal, who is the devil. You disown their asses. Start anew. Be the change you want to see. Jefferson never owned up to his illegal actions, his immoral actions, his, his, his inhuman actions. This dude never stood up and 
took responsibility, like so many others. That is the one thing that I cannot get over when it comes to him. Nobody can tell me nothing about Jefferson and uh, none of the other others that own slaves. But, but Jefferson in particular, though, I mean, he's got a, I got a special kind of hatred for him. Because I just cannot understand how in the hell can someone who owns slaves write the Declaration of Independence? How could you own human beings and write the Declaration of Independence? They need to take that shit, rip it up, and burn it. Thomas Jefferson, I don't know where your rotten ass is buried. But if I could just dig you up and bring you back to life for five seconds, I tell you, your mama should be embarrassed and your daddy should have pulled out. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?